We are live. Hey, good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. It is a Friday, and it's going to be Court Fortune Cookie Friday. Yay! I try not to be too bad with that crinkly thing. I know it sounds bad on the speakers, so I try not to do it too often. Anyway, I am Greg Master, Scrum Master, Agile Coach. Scrum Master and Agile Coach. And here on the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show, we talk about Scrum and Agile in a practical and tactical way. So you can bring value to your customer, not put 60, 80 hours a, a week in to get that value to the customer. So you can get home to your family and friends, have fun, and do some fun stuff. Do some fun stuff for the work, too. We do that. But really, it's just talk about making life simpler, okay? And yesterday, they did a big show on the Scrum Alliance uh website where they did a, a, a 20th anniversary session for the manifesto. So I wanted to talk about the manifesto. I'm going to be posting some stuff about the manifesto and, uh, and about appropriate work and what it, that's what I think the manifesto is about, what agile is about working on appropriate items. And uh, so I am going to post, there's a uh, agile uprising rising group that I know some of the people, one of my, Original, one of my first coaches was one of the people that founded that that podcast and um, the group. And I'm going to share throughout the week because there's a lot of things they interviewed, tried to interview. I don't know if they did all the interviews, but interviews all the founding authors of the manifesto. I thought it would be appropriate after they did the show the other day to share those podcasts out. So I'll share them in the different social media platforms. It's really good. If you any podcast you have, look up Agile up uprising and you will find the interviews are way back from 2016 so i bet you they didn't think about it. five years from now they were going to be the 20th anniversary but they did capture everybody i think we'll go through we'll figure that out um and today i want to talk about the manifesto pause and everybody, oh the manifesto why we have the manifesto everybody brings out the manifesto. like why not so I want to talk about it and the reason why i want to talk about it, i think the manifesto and i have my little notes here um helps us it's about value as much as anything else and i think people obsess about the wrong reasons maybe i'm misinterpreting but my interpretation of the manifesto and how i see it let's think about this and i think it all relates to a pro working on appropriate work or appropriate work um, or inappropriate work, minimizing inappropriate work. Um, individuals' interactions over process and tools, value number one. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. And responding to change versus following a plan. So let's think about that. For Why do I say it's about appropriate work? Um, and I'm going to say a little thing about doing uh, inappropriate work faster because I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Think about it. Individuals and interactions and process tools. A process and tool is not going to tell you whether or not you are doing the wrong job. It could if you prioritize and make a list, right, which so many people have a problem doing. Everything's priority one, right? Everything's priority one. So you can have all the processes and tools you want, but if they make everything priority one, what that does that give you right so having that interaction with individuals and, and valuing individuals in, in those interactions help you find what's the appropriate amount of work think about it this way too what if one of your co-workers just worked on a similar code and said hey i put the variables up here and there's a whole section of code it saves you trying to figure all that stuff out right so now you're now you're spending the right time on what you need to do. You need to delta whatever work the other individual did because you had an interaction with them. And if you didn't have the interaction, you would never know that they did that work. Otherwise, you'd be creating the same code. Now your code's twice as big. Now the whole system's twice as big because it has to run all the extra lines of code when you just need to do a modification or something or just a variable input or something like that or use the same thing to do the work. So think about that. Right. Working software over comprehensive documentation. I mean, unless like let me let me see, I'm gonna show you this. I got this the other day for the, the train museum. This is the Pennsylvania Railroad System Book of Rules. 
from 1925, I believe. So it's almost 100 years old. It's pretty cool. I was looking at it the other day. So it's the Pennsylvania Railroad System Book of Rules. That's comprehensive documentation, wouldn't you say? It lasted 95 years so far in existence. That's pretty amazing. So unless you're reading documentation that you think 95 years from now, people are going to want to buy it <laughs> because it's an artifact that's like, wow, okay, here's how you run a steam engine back in 1925. Um, does your documentation really have any value, right? Does it? I mean, there is some documentation value to help the customer figure something out quicker but the question is does it help them right then and there right if, it, if you have to dig for that documentation to help your customer your client do something that they need to do right away how much value does that documentation really have theoretically a documentation comes to place when you've screwed up your damn code your product sucks and they need to figure out why it's broken and not doing what they want them to do it right just thought on that one. So working software definitely provides value. Customer collaboration versus contract negotiation. I don't know how many times I've been into contract negotiation over a spec or requirements document or whatever. And they quick, they try to negotiate that thing. And by the time you're done negotiating, the whole document's out of date and not what the customer really wanted. So why do it? Why waste all that time and effort and money on negotiating those contracts. Why not just work and collaborate with the customer to develop together the solution that they want? Because be honest, most customers don't know what they want when they first start out. They have an idea, but until things start shaping up what's possible, they don't know. It was an interesting quote. Um, one of the first guys he quotes, I'm an engineer, I'm not a scientist. I actually make things that work. <laughs> I think he helped formulate that thing about working software. Um, and again, it's appropriate. Why are we working on something that's not appropriate? Why are we building a spec and working to that spec that it's not appropriate for what the customer really values and what the value customer needs? It's a good question, right? So, um, and last one, responding to change over following a plan. Again, related to the contract negotiation. We plan to have this, that, and the other thing. What if your competition comes out with a whole new product line that you weren't expecting and was trying to steal your market share? You need to adjust, right? It's what you need to do. So as far as that goes, Excuse me. <coughs> mm -mm. Mm. It's cold outside. Um, so responding to change, you were following a plan. So if you're following a plan that wasn't the appropriate work to be done, because the appropriateness has changed since you set the plan up, why would you do it, right? So I look at the manifesto as some guiding criteria to help you work on the appropriate things that need to be done to produce value for the customer. And that goes then into what we talk about. If we're working on stuff that's not appropriate and doesn't produce that value that we need for the customer, then we're wasting our time, right? This is why everybody works 60, 80 hours a week on stuff because they're working on stuff that's not appropriate and doesn't add value to the product line. This is why we do this show every day. This is why we do this. And this goes in my next part. And then we're going to do Fortune Cookie Friday. I got to make sure I'm good on time. Agile is not about doing inappropriate work faster. We talk DevOps, we talk about pushing code, we talk about all these electronic things that we can do to make us work faster. We talk about sprints and how we improve it and how we do write things down. If we spend all that activity on, on working stuff that's not appropriate, that's not what the customer wants, it's a waste. It takes away from going home and work, hanging out with family and friends, right? So, the Agile Manifesto, in my mind, 
is to help you find some items to help guide you on you. Are you working the most appropriate thing? <laughs> Sorry. I need a drink. I usually don't drink on these things, but it was funny. I was listening to a podcast that I did before for BAs and interviews because it just popped up on the podcast thing. And um, I was like, I got to say, I sent it to a couple of my people in coaching who are BAs looking in, in that realm. And one of the things they said in the interview, it's always good to drink a lot of water. Make sure you're properly hydrated before you do a live show. Boy, that bite me. I'm not appropriately hydrated. Anyway, so that was my conversation. So the Agile Manifesto is about working and giving you help you guidance and ask those four questions. Is the work you're doing appropriate, right? And is it appropriately giving value to the customer so you're not wasting your time and you can go home? If you're working on stuff that doesn't have any value or doesn't have any appropriateness, you're going to spend 60, 80 hours to get that little tiny of appropriate value to the customer because you spend 40 hours doing something else. Eh. Anyway, Fortune Cookie Friday. Ah, Fortune Cookie Friday. So I got a cookie that's been smashed, but it's been packaged by those Agile accountants out there. And we're going to read the fortune and we're going to interpret it and figure out what it says about the world, right? And we're going to apply whatever this cook, fortune cookie says ah, got it. to what we talked about today. And I have no idea. And the good thing is that these are the ones from the local little Chinese restaurant. So these are a little better than the one in the box. I only have one more left in the box. So I have to go buy some more. Got to have backup because who knows what <laughs> they're going to do next. I don't know. I have no idea. I can't predict the future, as my daughter would say. Okay. Success lies in the hands of those who want it. Success lies in the hands of those who want it. I would say, and applying to what we just talked about, when I say success lies in the hands of those who, who wants it, Bad grammar. The extra is who want it. Those of who's want it. I don't know. Anyway. Um, the idea being that if you really want to be successful, you spend as little time on the stuff that's not appropriate to what delivering value to the customer. You don't waste your time on that stuff. You don't waste your time in these ever long meetings and all that. I think I just saw something on the TV the, when I was walking in between. Um, you have three minutes. If you're on a date, you have three minutes to make a good impression on somebody. Three minutes. So having these long conversations, how long do these meetings, meetings really got to last? So if you're in a meeting with your boss, you don't have 15 minutes. You have three minutes to win their case. I mean, you have three minutes, right? You don't have a 15-minute presentation. You don't have a half-hour presentation. You only have three minutes to win. And then if they ask you questions, you have data to back it up. A lot of people won't understand that, but I think that's a good thing. If you build a presentation and want to win, make it a three-minute presentation. And in three minutes, you have three minutes to win over them to your side. All the other stuff is extra stuff to answer questions and just show that you're prepared to respond. So success lies in the hands of those who want it. So if you want it, you got to spend time on the appropriate things and not on the inappropriate things. And you have to make it happen. You have to make it happen. You have to look at the manifesto. You have to look at those guiding principles on how to make value happen and make it appropriate. So that's what I have for today. I hope you like the show. Hope you enjoy your Friday. A little thumbs up there. Give us a thumbs up so we can spread the good word. And I lost my bell. So let's do the train bell. Ooh, train bell. That's a loud bell. Um, I wish you best. Happy Friday. Happy scrumming. Enjoy your weekend. I don't know what time I'm going to do the show tomorrow. I'm debating. We might be doing some 
um, snow tubing or, or hitting a ski slope or something like that and recognition of manifesto of 20 years, right? No, my daughter's birthday. She goes snow tubing. Not for, for, not for the manifesto. Though I could say that, but it's not the manifesto. Anyway, you all have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. See you tomorrow on Saturday and Sunday. We do this every day. Talk a little bit about Agile. And again, I'm going to share the podcast where the um, Agile Uprising group interviewed all the, I think they tried to interview, they, their goal was inter every, interview every one of the people who worked on the manifesto. And um, it's a good goal, right? All right, take care. See ya.